Hi, Kevin here. Well, it is bone chilling cold outside today. It was three degrees Fahrenheit when I woke up. And when I went to the farm store early this afternoon, the temperature was only 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, very cold. Today seems like a really good day to make a red wine beef stew. And let me show you the ingredients. So for the beef, I'm using two pounds of boneless chuck stewing beef. I don't know if you can see the label here. And I already opened the package. And what you wanna do is dry the beef either in paper towels, here, let me move you down, either in paper towels or use a flour set cloth like I'm using. I like the flour set cloth because I can wash it and bleach it in the washing machine. Okay, then other ingredients. You'll need some carrots. I have four really fat carrots here. You could use five or eight not so fat carrots. A large onion one bunch of parsley, some salt, pepper, dried thyme leaves, fresh garlic or garlic paste, one 750 ml bottle of dry red wine, and that's just a normal sized bottle of red wine. And to thicken the sauce at the end, I'm going to use some cornstarch. Okay, I'm going to chop up the vegetables and then I'll move you over to the stovetop. All right, we're at the stovetop and I have my Dutch oven. This is a five quart Dutch oven over medium heat. And I'm going to brown the beef in probably two batches. So I'm just adding about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And I'm not going to salt and pepper the beef first because I will be adding salt later on. So in goes the beef. And you don't want to crowd the beef. There should be a little space between each morsel. Okay. And I'm going to brown the beef until it turns, oh, a deep walnut brown. And that's going to take about eight minutes, maybe 10 minutes, since I'm doing it in batches. And when the beef is good and brown, we'll come back. All right, the beef is brown, and I did have to do this in three batches. And what you do is use tongs, because you want to brown all sides of the beef. Okay, and then transfer the beef to a plate. And set this aside. Oh, nice not to hear that sizzling sound, right? And then, if your pot needs it, add a little more vegetable oil. maybe another tablespoon or so. And then add the carrots. And I did, I peeled and just roughly sliced my carrots. In they go. Also add the onion, which I diced just roughly. Give that a stir. And then I'm going to saute the carrots and the onions just until they caramelize lightly. That's going to take about eight minutes. And I'm going to cover this pot for a moment because I want to talk with you. Yeah, so this is way too close. So this is the kind of stew you want to make when you're going to be home for a while. 
maybe the kind of stew to make on a Sunday afternoon uh, because the stew will have to simmer for two hours in order for the meat to become meltingly tender, which is exactly what we want. Um, so, and I moved the camera here so you could have a look outside. See, there's snow on the ground and it is like solid ice out there. So, really cold today. All right, we'll come back when the carrots and onions are caramelized. But this is a stew that you cannot rush, okay? Okay, now I also I need to open the red wine. Now, this is a wine from Portugal. It's a dry red table wine. I've had it before, it's very good. Let's see if I can get the cork out, hang on. There we go. So this is the brand, but you could use any good, dry, drinkable red wine that you like or that you happen to have on hand. If, you re if you're not a wine drinker, but someone gave you some wine for the holidays, well, now would be a good time to use it, providing it is a good uh, red wine. All right, we'll be back. All right, my carrots and onions have developed some color. So now I'm going to add about a third of a cup of the red wine. And then as the wine starts to bubble, I'm going to scrape the bottom of the pot just to pick up any of the highly flavorful caramelized bits that have stuck to the bottom of the pot. Okay, we're looking good here. Now, sorry about that, that was my lid falling. Going to add salt, about half a teaspoon of kosher salt to start. And of course, we'll taste this later to see if it needs more salt. Also going to add some grinds of black pepper. And a teaspoon of the dried thyme leaves. A generous teaspoon. Thyme and red wine go very, very well together. Also going to add the parsley which I coarsely chopped in my food processor. And I always use the parsley leaves and the stems. The stems, honestly, have just as much flavor as the leaves, and I think it's a crime to discard the stems. Give that a stir. Then, I want to add my garlic paste. Now, if you're using fresh chopped garlic, you can add it at the end of the uh, cooking time for the carrots and onions. Because you really don't want the garlic to burn. I'm adding about eight teaspoons of the garlic paste. If you're using garlic cloves, use eight garlic cloves. Or don't use any garlic if you don't like garlic. We love garlic in this house. Okay, now to return the beef. Here it is, all very richly colored. Stir that in. Yeah, as I said, this is a stew that cannot be rushed. But the benefit is that you will have a super flavorful stew and your whole house will smell like pure comfort. That's a very good feeling on an ice cold winter day. Now, add the remaining wine. Glug, glug, glug. 
If you don't want to use wine, you could always use beef stock. Okay, now I'm going to bring the wine to a boil and then I'm going to lower the heat, cover the pot, and let this stew simmer for two hours. Meanwhile, the beef should turn meltingly tender. Oh, and you might wonder why I didn't add any potatoes to this stew. And the reason for that is because, it's getting adjusted here, is because I'm going to serve this stew uh, probably on a bed of hot cooked rice. I'm also going to serve bread with the stew. So I thought potatoes would just be too much starch, but you can absolutely add potatoes if you'd like. I recommend red potatoes because they hold their shape during long cooking periods. Okay, we'll be back. All right, the wine has come to a full boil. So now I'm going to cover the pot lower the heat, and again, just let the stew simmer for two hours. All right, the stew has been stewing for two hours, so here it is. Get a nice facial from the steam, and the steam is really fragrant, as you can imagine. So, and I did taste of the beef, and it is meltingly tender. So now what I'm going to do is get this lid out of the way. I'm going to ladle the stew into a colander. Actually, maybe I can just tip it. go. Oh, this is gorgeous, you guys. I wish you could join us for dinner tonight. Okay, now, so here's the contents of the colander. It's going to let it drain for a moment. Then, I'm going to put it on this platter. Just pour it on. Magnifique! Then, here's the uh, liquid or the broth from the stew. So, I'm going to return that to the Dutch oven. And then bring this back to the stovetop. Right, so I'm bringing the liquid back to a boil. And if you don't have enough liquid, I mean, if you'd like extra sauce or gravy, you can always add some water or even better, some more red wine. And here's the rice that I prepared as a bed for the stew. And then what I have here is two heaping tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this to make a smooth slurry. Hold on. Yes, and you just stir this together, get rid of lumps. Okay, and we're coming to a boil here. So now I'm going to add the cornstarch solution. You may not need all of that. And then give this a stir and it will thicken immediately. And if you want a thicker gravy, add a little more of the cornstarch solution. If you want a thinner gravy, add less. Grab my whisk. Okay. And the gravy or the sauce is ready. 
Okay, so now ladle the sauce over the stew. That is hot. It's a hot pot. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Okay, now I'm going to light the fire in the dining room fireplace and then plate this up and I'll show you what it looks like on the plates. Actually, I forgot one finishing touch. Some parsley. For a little color and flavor. All right, I'll meet you in the dining room. All right, here's the fire. Here's the dinner. Yeah, so I put the red wine beef stew on a bed of rice. Here's some of the uh, fabulous beer bread that I made for you the other day. That was my serving. Here's Mr. Fox's serving. Now all we need is Mr. Fox. Okay, I forgot that Mr. Fox had an appointment. And he told me about it this morning. I forgot. He did not want to disturb me because I was filming in the kitchen. So I've put his plate in the oven just to keep it warm. And it's going to be just you and me for dinner tonight, okay? A little vino. And I just want to taste this stew for you on camera. This meat is so tender it's falling apart. This is so wonderful. And this stew may seem like a lot of work to you, but really, it, it's totally worth the work because it is so delicious. I mean, this is home cooking at its best. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will give this stew or some variation of it a try. And I have the recipe over on my website, so I will put that link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. So good. Okay, bye for now.